you have got to guard how you think more than anything else. Simply stated, your outlook determines your outcome. Mike did a good job last night of showing geographically some economically recessed locations. And yet there were several, there were numerous people who had absolutely huge years in spite of the fact that the, local, that the economy in their state or states was severely recessed. Attitude. You have got to go after it with everything you've got and don't think about the fact that, uh, let me give you some examples and relate this to sales. A lot, of, a lot of salespeople say maybe around July 4th, oh, what's the point of me calling and trying to get in touch with a customer? It's prime vacation time. They're probably with family. I might as well not call. Well, guess what? That's a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? You've told yourself that they're busy and they're probably on vacation, so you don't call. So you're not going to get in touch with them if you don't call. Well, it's the same thing if you think about the economy. You say, well, John, we're in the second worst economy since the Great Depression. People aren't spending money. You're only half right. They're not going to spend money with you if that's what you think. You have defeated yourself before you've even started. Got it? Got it. Good. The reality is your thoughts will either supercharge or sabotage your success. Let me say that again. Your thoughts are either going to supercharge or sabotage your success. Two of the most important characteristics for people in sales are resilience and compartmentalization. What that means is this. No matter what is going on around you, you are able to shelter the, the buyer from all of the stuff that's going on in your life. Let's talk real world. You may have had an incredible fight with your spouse the morning that you left on that trip. And you're in, in an hour supposed to regain your composure and sit and you've got a high stakes presentation. You have got to compartmentalize. And one of the things my dad has said that sticked with me, it'll stick with me for the rest of my life. He says, you have to have a mental kidney. You have to filter out all of the negativity and all of the stuff that's a distractor. And you have to be laser focused and compartmentalized and resilient. And every day is your best day. Folks, I'm not talking about some hokey stuff and I'm not talking about faking. I'm talking about being disciplined in how you think each day. I'm asking you to ask yourself, make a note of it and then ask yourself this, what am I gonna do differently this year that's gonna take me to a whole new level? Your ultimate goal is not success. Your ultimate goal is mastery. Huge difference, folks, and hardly anybody talks about this. The principle is always work harder on yourself than you do on the job. Because when you work hard on yourself, you will achieve sales results that you did not think were even possible. It's compelling. Research tells us that there's about 30%, 30% of the buyers out there, their number one consideration is price. What that means is the majority, 70%, are interested in everything else. They want to be able to justify it, only 30%. So if you're out there saying, attitude, our, our services are too high, our price is too high, yes, you're going to have that as an objection. You need to be mentally tough, you need to be resilient, you need to compartmentalize that, and you need to have unbelievable confidence in front of that customer that we are the best organization bar none. No one can come close. That is contagious. That type of enthusiasm and conviction and passion, when you, when you come across that way, man, it's the difference between being a hacker, okay, and being a consummate sales professional. Okay. Over time, I've had the privilege of, of helping train hundreds of thousands of salespeople. And I'd like to share a story of one of the absolute best salespeople that I've ever met. Perhaps one of the best ever. He started off in pharmaceutical sales with zero industry experience. <clears throat> and more than that, 
what he was selling was not just to general practitioners, which is where you normally start when you crack in, break into the pharmaceutical market. He was actually selling to specialists. So we had to know even more. In fact, he was dealing with the second most highly educated specialists in the market. Tremendous egos. They spent the most amount of time going to school. I mean, you had to be razor sharp and on top of your game or you were not credible. With zero industry experience, in his first year as a sales rep, working for the single largest global multinational pharmaceutical company, he sold more than his entire team of 10 people combined. Absolutely unheard of. The sales executives at corporate headquarters were absolutely bamboozled. How in the world can this happen? A guy's got no industry experience, he's dealing with specialists, and he absolutely hits it out of the park. We've never, ever seen anything in our history of someone do this before. So they fly him to corporate headquarters and they ask him, what magic phrases are you using? What's your secret sauce? How in the world are you getting to get these doctors to, to prescribe such enormous volume of, of prescriptions? Long story short, they, they followed up with another question. They said, if we were to promote you to sales management, would you be able to build a team Hire a team and train, train a team to sell just like you. He said, absolutely, with conviction and without any reservation. They said, okay. In his very first year as a sales manager, his first full year, his team was number one in sales revenue. And for the next 27 years in a row, he was number one in sales revenue. He won more awards for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals than any person in the history of the company. He created training programs that were translated into multiple languages, and he did an awful lot of their uh, recruiting as well. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would like to have a sales mentor like that? What do you think having a, a, a person who can give you coaching and feedback would do to your sales performance? A lot. Be intentional about seeking out somebody that you respect Who's, who's, who's really good in sales. By the way, the person I'm speaking of is my father. I was incredibly blessed. The first sales training program I took, I was at age 14 with a professional sales force.